of 282,000 or 0.27%. I realize there's still a lot of moving parts to the budget that concern you on the revenue side, which makes it difficult to project at this point what the tax implication will be based on the proposed level of spending. However, this budget provides needed services for all areas of our community while being mindful of the current economic conditions. We're confident after you've completed your due diligence, you will see that the budgets presented to you by both boards are reasonable and lean. <clears throat> we respectfully request that you pass them on to the Legislative Council for review as presented to you tonight. We, the voters, want an opportunity to cast our votes for this budget with its current level of services. Thank you. Anybody else? My name is Janetta Miller, 146 Taunton Hill Road. I've been living in Newtown and teaching at Newtown High School for 15 years. Every single one of those years, the superintendent has presented a responsible budget that balances the needs of the schools with the ability of homeowners to foot the bill. This year's budget is no exception. However, Dr. Robinson has had to take extraordinary measures in order to maintain this essential balance. These are difficult times. Cuts have been made in the income, prospects, and plans of so many of us. Our homes, in too many cases, are the only asset that remains after all our careful planning. I urge the members of the Board of Finance not to assume that we are all looking for tax cuts. Some of us may vote against the budget because we are concerned about taxes, but many of us will vote for the budget as it stands today because we know that good schools and a strong community protect the value of our homes. There is, of course, another reason why I urge you to send the budget intact to the voters. When one town board after another cuts the budget without a clear directive from the voters to do so, the message sent to teachers and students is a dismal and demoralizing one. <clears throat> As a department head at the high school, I know how much time and energy my colleagues devote to their work with students, not just during school hours, but before and after school, in the evenings and on weekends. As a teacher, and a parent of two Newtown High School graduates, I know how much the young people of Newtown appreciate their teachers and how proud they are of their schools. Although our homes are important, Newtown's most important asset is our children and their futures. When I spend the weekend responding to my students' essays, when I take a couple of hours to write a detailed letter of recommendation, when I spend the evening cheering on students participating in Poetry Out Loud, I know that I'm contributing to that future. I give the time and effort freely, just as my colleagues do. <clears throat> All we ask is the appreciation and respect that you can offer by accepting the budget approved by our Board of Education and letting the people of Newtown use the ballot to communicate our priorities to you. Thank you. Ruby Johnson, 16 Chestnut Hill Road, Sandy Hook. I am going to echo what has been said, but I want to tell you, I really don't know much about the Board of Education budget, but I've heard some of the administrators speak, and I'm truly impressed. And a couple of days ago, I got a flyer through the mail, and I was very impressed with those scores that the Newtown students achieved. I support the Board of Education budget because I appreciate the people who supported it when my children were in high school. They are long since graduated. I appreciate the people who let me have an education in my hometown. And so I feel it's my duty to support education. It's part of being a citizen. I leave it to others like yourself and the administrators to come up with the right funds I do like to, would like to say this, however, 
in the 19, late 1970s or 80s, I'm not sure when, the federal government passed a law called No Child uh, Americans with the Handicapped Children Act. Children with American, with American children with disabilities, something like that. And it took the town quite a few years to come up with the funds to help autistic children, to help deaf children, to help blind children. We didn't do it overnight. It was a long struggle. But I see some of those young children now that graduated, and I see them, they're actually working. Sometimes you see them in the grocery stores. You see them in different places. We no longer put those children away. We help them. That's an expensive part of the budget. And then Congress had another law they passed called, called the Civil Rights Restoration Act. And part of it became what's called Title IX. And it had the audacity to require school systems to give girls equal opportunity. Imagine that. Well, we had quite a fight in Newtown, and it took 12 years, 12 years for the girls to be allowed to play some of the sports. So we've come a long way, and we've a long road to travel. But I have some serious questions about the selectmen's budget. I want to thank them for the long hours they spent mulling over that budget. Truly, that was a terrific task. However, I focused on Fairfield Hills. As you know, I wanted to buy that property for municipal needs. It hasn't turned out that way. But there you have places in your budget, something like, I was going to ask exactly how much, something like $250,000 a year to pay back the Newtown Youth Academy, if they should go forward with a three and a half million dollar project to take down a building and put in parking. That should have been done out of the 20 million dollar bond issue. But it wasn't. Other decisions were made. We may decide, and I think the selectmen are thinking about it, going back and asking the public for the three and a half million dollars and put it in a bond, it'd be cheaper to do that. But that's three and a half million dollars that we shouldn't be spending. We should have taken it out of the 20 million dollar bond issue. So I have serious questions. I've known Mr. Borst a long time. <laughs> he won't say anything tonight. <laughs> that's okay. Then we have another problem. You're planning, I think, not you, selectmen are planning, to enter into a contract with a private company, DeMarco Management Company, to manage this new town hall they're planning to put online for something like $232,000 a year. Now, I'm going to guess that that pays for the electricity and the gas and so forth. But I don't like the idea of another management firm coming in. We have a finance officer over here who's perfectly capable of writing the checks. And I'm sure we have people in the highway department or the school systems director of uh, the man who takes care of all the buildings, the buildings and grounds supervisor, Mr. Fiella. He can go over and check the boilers, check those things. Uh, so I really think that you should look again at that. Let's try to save money. Let's not have outside management firms keeping the books someplace else, like in Hartford. They're located in Hartford. We have this ONG engineering firm. They kept the books for too long until Mr. Tate came on board, kept it out of town. So. I hope you'll agree with me, and I hope you will look carefully at those expenditures. One, the last one is like $490,000. We can do better than that. Uh, we have talent in town that we can do a better job. So remember, $390,000.